Hey folks, we've got a quick and painless, but moderately handy analysis proof to do today. In a previous lesson, we proved that a sequence converges to a limit L if and only if all of its subsequences also converge to that same limit. And I'll leave a link to that lesson in the description. But what about subsequences of sequences that don't converge? Well, that's what we're going to talk a bit about today. If a sequence diverges to positive infinity, all of its subsequences also diverge to positive infinity. Pretty cool, and that's what we will prove. Notice that we don't really have to prove that if all the subsequences diverge to infinity, then the sequence diverges to infinity, because by definition, a sequence is a subsequence of itself. So if all the sequences do diverge to positive infinity, then the sequence definitely diverges to positive infinity. So we only have this one direction to prove. We're going to assume that the sequence AN diverges to positive infinity, and we're going to prove that an arbitrary subsequence ANK also diverges to positive infinity. Before watching the rest of the lesson, take a minute to think about this and make sure that it seems reasonable with your intuition of diverging to infinity and what a subsequence is. And if you're feeling brave, take a minute to try to prove it. It's pretty straightforward. All right, so how are we going to prove that our arbitrary subsequence diverges to infinity? Well, remember our definitions. What we need to do is take an arbitrary positive real number m, so we'll say let m be greater than zero, and we need to prove that at some point in this subsequence, after that, all of the terms are greater than this number big M. So eventually, the terms of the subsequence are all greater than big M. Well, we already know that the original sequence, AN, has that property, since we're assuming that it diverges to infinity. So that means that we know there exists some number that we can call big N, so that every term of the sequence after the big nth term, so for every n greater than big N, we have that a n is greater than big M. Again, that's by definition of a n diverging to infinity. We know that there's some number big N, so that every term of a n after the big nth term is greater than big M. Now, how can we use that fact to prove that our subsequence has the same property? Well, the key thing we have to remember here is that n k is greater than or equal to k. And this is a fact that I've talked about several times. I did a whole lesson talking about this inequality, in fact, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Remember that k is the index of the subsequence, but n k is an index of the original sequence. So what this means is that the kth term of the subsequence is at least k terms along in the original sequence, which is because every term in the subsequence has to be moving forward in the original sequence. So if we go k terms into the subsequence, that's got to be at least k terms into the original sequence. So why is this fact useful? Well, let's say that we consider k being greater than big N. For every k, which is an index of the subsequence, for every k greater than big N, well, we know that nk is at least k, which means, you know, all of this is greater than big N. Oh, so wait a minute. So this means that any term of our subsequence after the big nth term is also past the big nth term of the original sequence. But that means that this inequality applies to those terms of the subsequence. And so we can say that a n k is greater than big M as desired. Let's go over that one more time. So we took an arbitrary number, big M, that's greater than zero. By definition of the original sequence, a n, diverging to infinity, we know that we can go past, say, the big nth term of the original sequence to be guaranteed that those terms are greater than big M. But since, if we go k terms into our subsequence, 
were also at least k terms into the original sequence, we can say that if we go past the big nth term of the subsequence, then we're also past the big nth term of the original sequence. But we know that for terms of the original sequence, after the big nth term, those terms are greater than big M. And of course, every term of our subsequence after the big nth term is also a term of the original sequence. And so for all k greater than big N, we have that a n k is greater than big M. If this isn't super clear, then spend a little bit of time thinking about the definition of a subsequence and why this inequality is true. And again, I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson talking about it. If you go at least k terms into the subsequence, you gotta be at least k terms into the original sequence. And so by definition of diverging to positive infinity, we have proven that the arbitrary subsequence a n k diverges to positive infinity. So if a sequence diverges to positive infinity, then all of its subsequences diverge to positive infinity. One last interesting thing to note here, we've talked a little bit about how we can prove a sequence diverges by finding two subsequences with different limits. But now we see that strategy won't work for sequences that diverge to infinity because all of its subsequences behave exactly the same. Watch the corn grow in the fields I don't know what's on your mind